In this video, I'm going to take you through the entire Magic Lantern EOS M RAW menu on my EOS M. This here is a dual mount, uh, courtesy of Cole and Tom over at Shomtura and Alternate Cinema for sending this over for me to beta test. Uh, for anybody who's wondering, this dual mount allows me to mount both E and EFM mount lenses. And because of the nature of the E mount, this here is a micro four thirds to NEX, i.e. Uh, the Sony mount, next generation Sony E mount. And uh, because of that, I can now turn this bad boy into a micro four thirds mount so this is actually now in reality a triple mount lens so keep a eye out for that in the near future i'm really excited about the final version of this uh again i'll keep you guys updated now the purpose of this video is to do a full walkthrough of the magic lantern raw uh menu i am assuming with this video you already have magic lantern raw installed on the camera if you don't then i would suggest that you refer to my previous video this is i guess essentially a part two so uh, if you haven't uh, uh installed magic lantern or you don't know how to install magic lantern then that previous video will enable you to do so so i'm going to go ahead and turn this camera on make sure uh, your camera is in uh video mode as i have shown here and from there, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this camera on. Uh, this is essentially the camera. Uh, let me go ahead and focus myself up. Here we go. So this is what you're gonna be looking at with EOS M Magic Lantern RAW. One of the good things about Magic Lantern is that you're gonna get a HDMI output, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, but what I'm gonna go ahead and I am just gonna go ahead and close that up here. Now to get to the menu of Magic Lantern, press and hold the bottom button and then the menu is going to come up so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to walk you through each of the menu bits so in order to navigate through the larger menus which are all the all up here um to in order to do that all you got to do is just press uh left or right on the uh um what's it called on your d-pad on the back of the camera um you could also scroll as i'm doing here you can scroll between the menus and that'll allow you to go back and forth uh, between the various options. So that's control aspect number one. Control aspect number two has to do with uh, altering or adjusting the setting that you see on the menu. So one way to do that, if you wanna adjust the setting, so for example, the aperture here, you press the D-pad as such. Once you press the D-pad, then you can use the scroll to adjust the aperture. Um, to your liking, right? Now, the alternative option is you press the play button. Now, the play button will also bring up a secondary menu if there is a secondary menu. So let's go over to something like your crop mood settings. So on here, if I press the play menu, there's a whole secondary menu within that versus if I press the set button, right? There's a different set of options. So it's just a matter of understanding how to navigate between the different types of menus within the options of the main menu so and if you want to get out of something you just press menu once more and that'll bring you back and then you can go ahead and press left or right so what i'm going to do now at this point is just one by one let you know exactly what everything is some of it is just pretty obvious so for example you've got your white balance setting um, and you can adjust that white balance setting however you see fit. Now there, it does, now when through HDMI, it looks a little weird. Uh, you'll see it's a little cut off and that's okay. Um, uh, and then from here, you got your ISO settings. Um, now if you scroll, now in order to scroll within the menu itself, make sure you press the up or down button. And so as opposed to scrolling, because if you scroll, you're gonna go to a different menu page. So from here, I go to ISO, I can set the ISO scrolling and I use the scroll on the dial pad to be able to change that. Now, um, I'm indoors, I just have it set to 800. We'll talk about exposure basics and things like that at another time. 
Um, the whole focus of this video is understanding what the menu is, what are some of the settings that you want to enable before you go ahead and shoot everything. You got your shutter speed. The cool thing about the shutter speed, as you can see here, is you've got shutter angle and you've got your shutter speed. Um, whichever you prefer, you'll be able to see both of them. You got your aperture, you got your picture style. I like to keep my picture style as neutral. Um, exposure lock off, exposure presets off, dial a dual ISO off, exposure override off, and exposure simulation movie. And now this is, some of this is just default settings. And so that's okay. Next one, global draw uh, is uh, on on all modes. Now see, these are some of the options I like to enable. So with zebras, I'll turn those on. Focus peaking, I'll leave off. Uh, I The way I like to get my focus is I will uh, punch in to like 5X or 10X, uh, and then I'll set my focus to exactly what I need. And then I will punch back out or pull back out uh, as opposed to just looking at any of the red lines for focus peaking. But we got prop marks. Spot meter is something I appreciate and I like to keep that on. False color, I'll keep that off. Some people like false color. If I were to use false color, I would rather use false color on an external monitor and just my preference. Uh, histogram, I'll keep that off. Waveform, that is something I would want to keep on. Now, the cool thing about waveform is now you can press the set button here to enable or disable. Now, I can also press the play button here to go into the secondary menu for waveforms. Uh, you have the option between small, large, and full screen. Uh, and just to kind of give you an idea what small looks like. So this is what small looks like. And if I could pull out of that, um, you'll see right here. Um, yeah, there you go. There's the small waveform menu. Uh, now on an external monitor, it'll show up over here, but on your Magic Lantern EOSM, it might just show up over here. But because I'm connecting this through HDMI via OBS onto my computer, um, it's essentially showing up right over here, which is fine. Uh, now, what is the difference between that and say, uh, large? So if we go to large uh, and then I pull out of the menu, uh, obviously it is much, much bigger. Uh, I prefer the, uh, this thing to be more, not that big. Alternatively, what does full screen look like? Uh, that's small. Hold on a second. Full screen. And then if I go back, obviously it's going to take up the entire screen. And that's not something you want. <laughs> unless you're shooting exactly by, um, unless you're shooting um, just based off of exposure, which is not usually a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and make that into small my recommendation for you as well. Everything else, I'll just keep that as off. Now let's move over to the next side. Now this is basically where the vast majority of the value of Magic Lantern exists. Uh, we have Crop Mood, which is something that was developed by Bilal Fakhouri. Uh, he and I do share the same first name. Uh, so that's off to you, brother from another mother. And um, so he developed Crop Mood and Dane, uh, he actually took that development and kind of further optimized that here. So uh, essentially when you click on, uh, so crop move right now is enabled. If you press set, it's going to turn, give you the option to choose between the different um, aspects of crop mood. So you have, you can turn crop mood off altogether. Uh, but what's the point you want to en enable that. Now there's three real versions of crop mood. Uh, version one, and just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to 16 millimeters and then I'm going to turn this off and then I'm going to open this up and then you will see. So if you do one for one, no, not one for one, let's go three by three. I would consider three by three, the, uh, general, um, look of it. And what this allows you to do is essentially get the full field of view of the sensor. And so here I'm at uh, 11 millimeters, uh, as you as you notice at the bottom. And then I zoom in all the way. I'm at 16 millimeters. So just make a note of that. I'm at 11 millimeters now. And so if I go back and then from here, I go to one to three crop and I go back to menu, you'll notice there's a sudden crop there's there's a little bit of a punch in and so 
what's the situation here. We're looking at about a 2x crop. And then if I go for a one-to-one -one pixel to pixel, I'll explain all this in a minute. Uh, and then I go back and boom, there's even more crop. And then I go into uh, six, uh, 16 millimeters and uh, you'll notice uh, how much more uh, the crop exists as such. So just to kind of explain what these uh, different options are. So the in, on the EOS M, it's an 18 megapixel camera, just so you can understand the value of what these different options are and what you are choosing between versus compromising on between the different options. This is a 18 megapixel camera, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it's 12 megapixels. Regardless, whatever the megapixel is, uh, the total resolution is just over uh, four, maybe 5K. Not worrying about the specifics. What happens is that when you pick uh, a three by three, what it's doing is essentially it's picking one third of the pixels, as I understand, one third of the pixels horizontally, one third of the pixels vertically, and then it's giving you that image. Now, the upside of that is because due to uh, due to the fact that now you're working with less data, it has to process through a lot less, and therefore it's able to give you more of the screen. The, this technology, the camera, the buffer, the chipset, the circuitry inside, is not fast enough to give you every single pixel. Now, there, the upside is you get the full field of view of the sensor, but the downside is that you will not get the sharpest image possible. It's good, it's good enough, I think, for most uses, but uh, due to the way that it's processing the image, you'll also experience moray. Moray is whenever you're dealing with any kind of textured uh, fabric or th things with uh, noticeable patterns, I just noticed I have a little uh, mosquito patch here. Uh, any, anything that's dealing with um, uh, patterns, you're going to see some sort of like moray, moray thing come up. And to avoid that, uh, one of the recommendations is for you to go to a uh, one to one pixel crop. And so what one to one does is that it's going to take every single pixel, but because the camera is not able to uh, process the entire sensor, it punches into a portion of the sen sensor uh, to what would be the equivalent of maybe a 3x crop on a full frame. And so that gives you really good sharp image quality, higher resolutions. Uh, but the only compromise now and the thing that you have to deal with is the fact that you are cropping into the sensor itself. So therefore, you now have to take into consideration that you're shooting at the field of view of like Super 16 as opposed to Super 35 or full frame if you're on full frame. Uh, uh, if you were using a focal reducer or a speed booster. Now, if everything that I just mentioned here with relation to full frame, field of view, things like that, is just kind of going over your head, that's okay. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below and I can direct you to the appropriate video content that would brief you on what you need to know to understand all these different things. But essentially the key thing here is that you get better image quality at the one-to-one -one crop at the expense of your field of view. So if you want a wider angle, you're gonna to need to use a wider angle lens or something that gives you a uh, um, uh, gives you a greater field of view. That's the only thing that you need to understand. But if you don't want to deal with a wider angle lens or you don't have a wider angle lens, but you still want the wider angle field of view, then it is recommended that you go with the three by three. Now, the question is, what is this uh, one by three? So one by three is what some might call anamorphic mode. So essentially what it's doing is it's that, that it's taking every single pixel vertically, but it's taking one of... Um, or rather the other way around. I think it's taking uh, one third of the pixels vertically, but it's taking a bunch of the pixels horizontally to some degree. Uh, yeah, I think every pixel horizontally and therefore it is then also um, uh, cropping in because it can't take all the pixels of the entire sensor. And so that's what this feel, uh, this option is. It seems to be a, uh, a, a compromise, a decent compromise of sort. And, uh, and that's okay. 
but if we go here now it's a 2x crop um, and if uh, and this brings us to our next item with the raw video menu now if I press it I select it it turns it off uh, but if I press the menu button instead it brings me to a whole new uh, um, set of selections I'm going to turn my face off <laughs> and so you, this way you can see things a little bit clearer so we have a number of things that you're going to deal with. There's resolution, there's aspect ratio. Now you can try to set the aspect ratio. Uh, and that's basically um, it, five to one, four to one, three to one, two to one. So it's basically 2.5 times wider than it is tall. And that's essentially what it's telling you. Now, as you uh, change the ratio, your vertical resolution is also increasing. Uh, and it's a question of how much more can you go? I think uh, the the most that you can get in terms of vertical resolution is an aspect ratio of 16 by nine. But understand that whatever this number is, you're the like it's because it's using anamorphic mode, it's using every other pixel. This number can get confusing sometimes. So as a result, my recommendation is simply to choose the three by three. And so when I pull out of that, go back in, you'll notice something here. You'll notice that this is um, this resolution is like, why is this resolution so low? Right. It's like it's not even 1080p. Right. It's uh, nine, 1736 by 967. Right. And so that's the reality. You're going to not end up with a proper 1080p resolution image when you're using the three by three. That's the compromise. Now, it's still a good quality image. It's uh, it's just below 1080p it's 976p <laughs> if uh, if that means anything if i from here change this to say a one-to-one -one crop go and i exit the menu re-enter the menu and then you'll notice i got a significantly greater resolution i got 1440p if i press play on that i can even change my resolution um so let's see what's the highest resolution 2.5k if I change my aspect ratio to 1440p, yeah, 1440p at 16.9 is the highest resolution that I can get. And so this is 2.5k, right? This is uh, 2.5k, 1440p. This is a high resolution. And so um, this is, you can change your resolution, you can change your aspect ratio, but typically when you're shooting stuff for YouTube and things like that, um, the aspect ratio 16.9 is a good number to be at. Um, there are a couple other options here where, uh, if I select 1440 and I press play, uh, there are other presets within that, right? We have 1440p, we have 1280p, we have 3k, 2k, 2.8k, 2.5k. So one of the things, uh, so my typical go-to, uh, is 1440p and 1280p. What is 1280p given? Well, 1280p is what I consider sort of like an open gate style. If you don't know what open gate is, what that means is that our sensor is actually a three by two ratio sensor, not 16 by nine. But one thing you'll notice here is that in 1280p, my resolution 1920 by 1080, I am now getting full proper raw 1080p, albeit it is at a significant crop of 4.5 three seven x so if you do the math if you have a 10 millimeter lens on your camera uh you can uh multiply that by 4.37 and you're actually getting a 43.7 millimeter field of view so something to keep in mind and be cognizant of so now you'll notice there's a aspect ratio here that could be altered and you'll notice the as I change the aspect ratio, the resolution, the vertical resolution is increasing and you can go up to 1280. So 1920 by 1280, that is a three by two aspect ratio. We're talking about like um, square video. So anybody who's doing like social media content, you're getting a this is a pretty decent. This is more than 1080p now. You have a lot more vertical resolution as a result and so uh i actually really like this feature now obviously you've got to deal with uh that 4.37 x prop right that's uh that's right uh, there we go that's right here right this 4.37 x crop is something you're gonna have to deal with now if that's too much of a crop you can always dial it back by going up to the crop 
mood, pressing play, not enabling, right? Press play. And then from there, you select your preset and go back to 1440p. And then you go back, go back. Uh, now, anytime you change your resolution, you're going to want to have to get out of the menu, press down again, go back to the menu. So that way now you can choose your resolution options. Again, this is this is a little bit of the uh, finickiness of Magic Lantern, but it works. And so it's just a matter of knowing uh, how and when to operate the um, uh, the stuff on this camera. So now the other modes I wanted to kind of showcase, now you got 1440p. Um, there's also frame rate settings here. You could choose between 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. Uh, within that, um, I just changed it to 25, uh, but let's bring it back to 23.97. Uh, in 1440p, now in 1280p, what other resolution options are there? I don't use all the presets, so I'm not completely familiar with uh, all of the uh, available options. So I'm just, I typically stick to either 1280p or 1440p. Those are usually my two go-tos. Now there is a 2.8K, 2.5K and 3K. Now uh, with 2.8K, for example, if you go here and you go back, and I go back in the menu. And then from here, I go to the resolution, press play. Now I have a five to one aspect ratio and I can kind of increase that to a 2.12 uh, to uh, one ratio. So it's like a 12. So I have a wide resolution. So this is what it's gonna look like. So if I go back and then I turn my face off and then I go here, you'll see it is a wide angle, essentially. Um, why you would want to do this? Maybe you want that, I guess, wide cinematic look. Uh, that could be one possible option. The reality, you're getting more um, horizontal resolution, uh, and that's where it adds at. Now, one of the things you could do, and this is one of the things that I'm going to be exploring in a later video, possibly, is using an anamorphic adapter. Or, or a lens and it's normally with anamorphic what you're trying to do is you're trying to get more uh horizontal information horizontal image and you and you squeeze that i guess uh appropriately um and so as a result you end up with you know the black bars on the top and bottom but you're really just squeezing a lot of the image into uh a 16 by 9 frame and then you adjust it in post-production uh, what I'm going to be trying to do is the opposite because you're already starting with such a wide image. I'm going to turn that anamorphic 90 degrees and try to get more vertical information. And I'm going to squeeze it in the opposite way to take that really wide field of view and make it fit within a 16 by 9. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But that's just going to be a video for another day. Uh, so again, these are our, if we go here, press play. And then from here, select your preset. Again, these are your various presets. I encourage you to experiment, try things out, see how, uh, see which options you like best. I've been using Magic Lantern for a few years now. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I love it and I appreciate it. Um, and I've come to understand that I tend to gravitate towards uh, a one-to-one you know, -one crop it's, that will give me a 16 by nine ratio in this rendition of Magic Lantern with crop mode, and that was done in a collaboration with Bilal Fahori and Dane. Uh, and I like the 1440p specifically, uh, and my secondary, if I want a little bit more uh, to be able to punch in a little bit more, I'll take the uh, uh, the, uh, the 1280p. And in addition to that, as a third option, if I really need the field of view, I'll punch back out from here I'll go to a three by three and I will get the 976p <laughs> sort of resolution. Now, uh, bit depth. Bit depth is so you can uh, choose by selecting it first. So uh, right now here uh, you press select and that gives me the option to choose between 14, 12, 11, 10. I have found that 12 bit is a sweet spot with relation to color depth resolution and um uh and being able to record if you max out the settings on this camera 
you're not going to be able to record for more than a few seconds. That's just the reality. So 14 bit and all that. So 12 bit is more than enough for me to work with. Um, and my encouragement is for you to also consider 12 bit. You got your frame rate options. Again, this is, uh, so you'll see down here, right? Uh, all the way down here, you'll see the option between the settings that you've dialed in with relation to the crop mode. Uh, so right now, oh, I mean, uh, I exited out of the menu. So right now crop mode is off, right? So I turn it back on. I go to one-to-one -one crop, exit that, turn it back on. So with the, um, with the uh, frame rate settings or whatever the settings of uh, crop mood settings and the presets that I've dialed in, it'll tell you exactly what frame rate options are available to you right down here. And so I just typically keep with 23.976 frames per second. Um, one of the things that you could uh, choose here from the preset, um, it tells you exactly um, within the preset on the bottom, it'll tell you what frame rates are available. So at 2.5K between 24, 25, and 30, um, same thing with 2.8K, actually just 24 and 25. At 3K, it's just 24. At 1440p, 24, 25. 1280p, 24, 25. Full resolution. Oh, so now if you're using the full sensor maxed out, the most you'll get is two frames per second. So you might be like, yo, below, what? for what reason would I want to use two frames per second for? I'll tell you what, time lapses. If you want 5.2K resolution time lapses at two frames per second, then this is the option for you. And maybe we'll, we can work on a video together uh, that uh, showcases how to get some baller time lapses, whether it's drive time time lapse where you just mount the camera on the dash and uh, you get some of that those light streaks as you're driving or some clouds passing by or sunrise or whatever, right? This is the setting that I would consider uh, to be able to do that. Uh, now you have uh, 1620p. I've never choked, I've never used this, uh, but apparently you get a 4.3, uh, 2.1K. This is something to explore for the future. Uh, and then you have your 1920 by 1080. Um, uh, but again, I, I have not tried this. Now, if I go back, right, and then from here, I choose three by three, um, and then let me exit out, go back in the menu, and then I press play. Now, within uh, the 1080p, within the preset, so there's two different presets for 1080p. There's a high frame rate preset. I don't know what the frame rates are. Uh, there's 1080p, and then there's... Uh, higher high frame rate and regular 1080p modes. I have not used this version of Magic Lantern um, prior, actually up until this video, I was using the crop mode by Bilal Fakhouri that was released a, uh, a year prior to this. So this was released this 2024. Uh, I've been using the one from 2023. So some of these options are actually fresh and new to me. So we're actually doing this walkthrough together. So just a heads up. <laughs> Uh, so we got the high frame rate here. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, let's see here. Select this. Yeah. And then I go to 1080p. Um, what are my options here? So I guess for the most part, um, I see 24, 25, and 30. Uh, if anybody's familiar with on uh, getting frame rates like 48 frames per second, let me know. Uh, and we can explore that together. So let me go back to my crop mood, go to my one-to-one -one preferred crop. Uh, now, anytime I change the resolution, I'm going to exit out of the menu and then I'm going to press down and then re reconnect with the menu. And then from here, let's go back down, continuing with, we got bit depth, we got frame rate, we got aspect ratio. Now, again, they have this option here, but the appropriate place to uh, change that. So if I go here, uh, and I changed 1280p to 1440p, which is what I really want. Again, change that resolution, go back in the menu. And then from here, I'm at uh, 1280p, um, which is the highest possible resolution. But if I go to 69, I'm at 1440p. That's the actual highest possible resolution. Okay. Um, now in raw video, uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to mention earlier, so if you press play on raw video, you go down here, 
kill global draw on. So anything that's essentially all your heads up displays or your histograms or your waveforms, all of that is going to be turned off while it's recording. Uh, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, all you guys who are more experienced with Magic Lantern, especially this version, let me know if there's any um, uh, incorrect information that I've relayed here. But what I understand when you do kill global draw, it turns off all of that stuff that's on screen so that it can dedicate those visual resources to the recording so you can get longer record times. Um, so yeah, uh, then we have now these other options. Uh, I will uh, keep off, record trigger off, advance. Let's see what's in our advanced options. So the I, for the most part, just uh, I don't enable any of this pre-record offs. So I'll just go back, right? Uh, we've got our aspect ratio, customized buttons. I haven't touched that sound recording. Uh, I would like to have it on. Yes, 48 kilohertz. Yes, good. Shutter expo uh, exposure. Okay, what do we have here? This allows me to adjust my shutter if I want to. Aperture, I can adjust my aperture from here as well. ISO, I can adjust my aperture. So it seems that you can adjust your ISO, aperture, and shutter from both the plus minus area as well as the camera menu that's over here. So we got shutter lock off, shutter timing off, shutter range original. Uh, so if I go here and I say full range, versus original. So if I go to full range, this gives me, uh, as I understand it, more minute control over the shutter, or maybe it's a different level of increments that I can work with. Um, what I would assume this would be a value for is if you're dealing with flickering lights and you really need to get in on something that, uh, oh, look at that. What did it just say? One over 22,000? <laughs> <laughs> zero degree shutter or something like that. Yeah, it's a zero degree shutter, one over 22,000, uh, one over 15,000, one degree shutter. Wow. Okay. Uh, I didn't th I didn't, I didn't know that was possible, but apparently with this, uh, you were able to achieve that. If I were to disable that and I go to or original and I go to shutter exposure and I adjust things, this just seems like your typical, um, shutter adjustments that I had before. So I guess that's how it is. Now, SD overclock, I have always enabled this. Uh, and sh when you, so if I press play here, um, no, not play, but select it, right? It allows you to choose the speed in which you're trying to overclock your SD card. I've always set it to 240 megahertz. Um, and this would allow, this would ensure that you get the longest possible record time uh, when you're recording raw video, all right? Now, we got some uh, photography options. You have the option of advanced bracketing, intervalometer for time lapses. Um, uh, now, one of the things that an intervalometer is also useful for, so there's time lapse in video form, which we talked about earlier, where you could do two frames per second, right? And then there's time lapses using an intervalometer where you're actually taking a photo, you're triggering the camera, I guess with Magic Lantern, you can tell it to trigger a uh, photo to be taken with the settings that you've dialed in. Now, intervalometer, there's a software version within Magic Lantern, or you can get yourself an actual intervalometer that I have one of those. And the trick for the intervalometer in my case um, wasn't so much for taking time lapses, but more so about bypassing the 30 minute record limit uh, in uh, Canon cameras in the past. And that trick essentially was that 29.59 minutes. So, 20, uh, so essentially at just before 30 minutes, the camera recording would stop due to the recording limit that the camera had. And so with the intervalometer, you would tell it to trigger the shutter, which was mapped to the record at 30 minutes in one second or at 30 minutes. And so as a result, you could just continuously record uh, in 30 minute segments without you having to remember to uh, trigger that. So that's just one of the options here. But intervalometer in this context is actually, from what I understand, is referring to uh, for, uh, for taking photos and mostly used for time lapses. Um, now I have never used uh, a flash or a bulb. I don't, I've never used the audio or more start or motion detector or sound picture or flash tweaks or shoot preferences. So, but these are options that are here 
focus endpoint depth of field settings i've actually not played with these options in the past i don't see i don't see a need for it now uh digit peaking off for the live view saturation normal again i'll i'll leave all of this at its normal settings um color scheme default all of that i'll leave as is now we go here configuration options the good thing about this version of Magic Lantern, uh, which is the collaboration between Bilal Fakhuri, which is Crop Mood and Dane, is that a lot before you would have to preload a lot of modules. Um, and in this case, most of the stuff is already loaded up for you. Uh, this is where the modules are. Um, and you can choose exactly what you want to do and how you want to enable it. There's a lot of the stuff that's um hdmi output controls um i don't know what this is um image name mlv record in fact i would invite for those who actually have deeper knowledge and experience with some of the modules here for there to be a dedicated walkthrough video on what each of these modules are and what are what are the reasons for which you would enable some of them so uh, but yeah, then we have debug options. I just leave all this alone. So really the only um, menu option uh, that you really need to worry about here is the first three. That's it. I know it's a lot across the board and this is great if there's additional options that you want to have. Um, and, and that's cool. But the only thing that you really need to worry about uh, even more, so even beyond just plus and minus here, just the overlay and the movie options, because the movie options already gives you your ISO, your shutter lock, or not your shutter lock, hold on a second, uh, your ISO, the aperture and shutter. So these three, you already have in the camera settings and the movie settings here. So you can essentially only, you only need the white balance option, um, when you're exploring this section over here. So, and then essentially is um the for the most part all the necessary uh, uh menu options that you would need to be walked through let me go ahead and exit out of that this is magic lantern you'll be able to record some amazing stuff perhaps in a future video i will showcase to you the process for which we record content on here on magic lantern and then after recording, how do you go about then taking those MLV files? And I've already done some videos in which, and you'll find several tutorials online as well, on once you've recorded the files on these MLV, in the MLV format, how do you then convert them into something that you can actually work with and edit? So that'll be a video for another day. As of right now, this walkthrough is done. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you soon.